Father, we bless your name this morning. We say thank you. Thank you for the privilege that we could stand this morning. The privilege that we could wake up. The privilege that we could breathe. Oh, we worship your name, our mighty God. Thank you for the way you have been fathering us. Thank you for the way you have taken good care of us. Father, we say thank you, Lord. You are worthy, 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 Lord. You are worthy. You are. Yeah. 
their eyes and power and might, and in their hands is the keys to make great and to give strength unto all. Hallelujah. Can we see David there exalting the name of the Lord? So David was elogizing God because David knew the, some of the principle of God. David said that in God's hands, all things have God. All things, including Satan, including darkness, all things serve God. And in his hands are power, majesty, dominion, honor belongs to our God. So everything is about God's kingdom. Our existence, the purpose he created us, is about the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Because our God is the great God. He be, all power belongs to him. The Bible says both riches and honor come from who? From him. And he reigns over all. He's the governor over all. He's the emperor over every nation. And the Bible says his kingdom shall know no end. Amen. Amen. So quickly let's look at our introduction. The kingdom of God is also known as the kingdom of heaven. And we will see this in Matthew chapter 19, verse 23 to 24, when Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God. You know, he said that it would be easier for, for, the, for the ox, the donkey, to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And most of the time when we are talking about the eye of the needle, you know, actually it was a parable. No, it was a, an illustration of what is happening in Israel that time. When you want to go to the market, there is a passage. You know, they call it the eye of the needle. That passage, you know, if you want, you are looking for shortcuts to get to the market. If you pass through that place, you will be in the market faster. But the issue with that eye of the needle is that you can't pass through it with your luggage, you know, with your market stuff. So the, let, let's say that your donkey is coming with the with the caravan and all those things that you want to sell in the market or you are buying. You know, you have to offload that donkey so that that donkey can now see and pass through it. So that is what Jesus was saying, that it will be easier because you have to offload. You cannot go to the kingdom of God with all, all the issues of life. Oh, I want this, I want that. No, you have to offload them. So that is what Jesus was saying in that place, that the kingdom of heaven is the same thing as the kingdom of God. And the kingdom, and that is what we'll be looking in depth this morning. The concept of the kingdom of God takes a take on various shapes of meaning in different passages of the scriptures. And if you look at the teachings of Jesus, right from the time he started his ministry, he, he walked, he, 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 the expand of his ministry, we can say he takes over three and a half years. During that three and a half years, every emphasis is on what? The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And this kingdom of God, it has meaning. So that is what we'll be looking at. A general understanding of God's kingdom program will help every believer, and I believe this morning we are all believers, we will understand what it entails. It will help us to fashion our lives the way God wants us to live it. Amen. Moreover, the concept of the kingdom of God is generally considered to be the center theme of Jesus' teaching. And he be the center theme of Jesus' teaching as his followers, as his believers. That is the center theme of our life. In fact, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that's memory verse. If we hold on unto him, if that is the only Bible verse, we anchor our life onto, there is no way we miss the kingdom of God. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his right, God's righteousness. He said, every other thing, including wealth, fame, money, they will be added. So that is what we'll be doing today, this morning. We'll be split into our class. We'll have one on, on my right-hand side and one on the left side, and our teacher will take over. Thank you.
one way to instruct us so that we will not disobey. Because I've learned that the major problem we have is this tendency to go against God's will, to disobey. It's very easy for us to disobey. But when we pray regularly, when we fast regularly, we will be knitted with God, who is the supreme head over all. Because the Bible says in Daniel that we read, it said that his kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. So he will be able to guide us. So by praying and fasting and moving closer to God. Then, is there any other way we can remove, we can seek his kingdom? Is there, is there any other way we can seek? No, remember in Matthew 6, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So how can we seek that righteousness? How can we seek that kingdom? Any other way? Thank you, sir. All right. So, my question is, The first one is that minimize distractions. Second one you mentioned, sir. Move with godly friends. Move with godly friends and improve more on our quiet time. Not to, most of us we just do quiet time in the morning and that is it for the whole day. We need more than that. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. So I have a question here. From first Timothy chapter twenty-nine, verse eleven, our passage here. Says there was a guy who was in the greatness and power. Showing him all the things. 
kingdom of the world and the glory of them. And I thank God for you. All these things in his mighty name. If thou be called by us and worship him. And Jesus said of him, get into, get into me, total submission, if thou shalt worship him, let us go. And do me for me. So it's a continuum. And then we really use that as a, as a base. You see, when I hunt out to catch an animal, and we put a small meat there to attack the animal, so that when the animal tries to eat animal, it will get fat. So the fact that they are using those riches of the world to entice those who are poor people to come and sell their souls is not a base. So um, the best way for us is to come into our resources by showing them the work of God. That the devil even tells us that when the world cries, let's not do any of the good things of the kingdom. By the time those people sell their souls, the Lord will come and start to repent and get into the world. Thank you. God bless you, sir. He has answered me well. And I just want to add to it also that our youth also, our children, we talk about our children that grow up to become youth. When they are small, they can hear the word of God, but they can hear that the money and talk. Let's provide them with the word of God. Every child that can read must cultivate the time in a day, personally, to study the word of God. Because when you study the word of God, you will not be ignorant. The devil, the one of the tools of Satan is deception. And deception is what? Mixture of truth and lies. But it is not pure truth. No, it will be, it may, it may even be 99% truth. And 0.1% lie. It's still deception. But when you know the truth, which is Jesus himself, the word of God, when Satan comes, you're able to say, hey, hey, I catch you, you're a liar. So we need to stick, stay with the word of God, invite in the word of God, so that the devil will not switch us off our feet. When they deceive Jesus, like what Dr. Kola said, the same thing, a whole world, the world itself, God himself, Satan has the boldness, the audacity to go and meet him, that just bow. It's easy to bow, just to go down and bow. But Jesus knew what he's trying to do. He knew that he wanted to take his authority. And how did Jesus conquer him? By the word of God. Let's assume that Jesus has not studied the word of God. He would have fell flat, just like the way Adam fell. So we need to know as a believer, that, as a youth, to stay with the word of God. We need time to cultivate and spend with the word of God. And by the time we do that, it will help us so that we will overcome temptation. When tempted, in fact, when you are serious in you, any morning they break around you do, it's only the spirit of God within you that can make you to defeat it. Because you are in you. And that is what Satan does. He will make sure that you orchestrate that program or that plan so that you'll be in serious mood. Then you will not start parading them before you like a dangling carrot. But as a child of God, we need to be invited in the world so that we'll have the strength and the energy to resist him. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Any other question? Okay, if there is none, let me read uh, the conclusion of uh, today's topic. Sorry, I think God broke the mic. Okay, conclusion says, we are equally commanded to witness to others that, that the kingdom of God is open to all who will surrender their life to Jesus. And we can see that in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, and even in Mark chapter 15, verse 15. This kingdom of God we are talking about is not excluded to a, a few set of people. As long as you are a human being and you are ready to surrender your life to Jesus, surrender simply means that he, be, he becomes law. Whatever he says is final. Whether I like it or I don't like it, whether I feel like it, or not, is in charge, then you are part of the kingdom. And we must not own it. We must say it to others and tell others about it. So this is all we have for us this morning. And I want us to be on our feet as we pray. That the Lord will help us to be the dweller of this kingdom of God. This kingdom of heaven, we must not be excluded from it. We should not be hearing about it, but we should be part of it. We should exist. The Bible says that the, 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 the kingdom is in righteousness, is in peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Father, help me, Lord, to walk in your righteousness. Help me, Lord Jesus, 
from the joy to only be, be reflected from what I'm passing through. Help me, Lord, to dwell in your peace. Let your peace be my governor. Let your peace lead me forth. Let it lead me forth every day, every second, in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, pray. Let's pray that God will help us to seek only this kingdom of God, to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Because we know when we run after the kingdom, every other thing will run after us. Fame, money, whatever we need, definitely the kingdom will provide for us. Father Lord, we give you thanks this morning. We thank you because we know you are acting unto us. We thank you, Lord, because we know the cast away. We thank you, Lord, because we will not be above those five foolish virgins, but we will be above the wise virgins that have the oil in their lamp, that seek your kingdom. Father, we bless your holy name, Lord. Be that exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray this word that we have heard this morning. Don't let it stand against us in the name of Jesus. Let us be the doer of the word in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of everything, let us always dwell with you in your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. 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 I will begin to worship God. Let's give him thanks for bringing us to his pavilion this morning. It's a great privilege. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you.
name. There shall be showers of blessing. La, 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 la. Testimony this morning. Uh, 
to say that if you are if you going to sing, you sing. If you are going to, you know, share the testimony, you sh share the testimony. Hallelujah. So anyone, testimony? Anyone, what the Lord has done for you? Yes, Tolua, what the Lord has done for you? Yes, mommy, number two. Yes, daddy, number three. Praise the Lord. Okay, Tolu.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Lord. Yes, um, I bless the name of the Lord on behalf of um, every member of the church. And more importantly, my testimony is on behalf of my wife. Uh, in uh, 2022, I applied for her to study at KZN. So, but due to the fact that lockdown just passed, and then the, she couldn't secure her visa to come here and study. So she has to be studying from Nigeria. Due to the environmental situation over there, she she had to fill she fit two two of her modules, uh, one of the So since that time we couldn't like really register again for her to come and then do this program. So but last year, when I said okay, I think it's high time we should just finish this program. We can't have an unfinished business. So we applied for her to come and then finish that program. So then she came to March this year to start the program and then try to conclude it. But the reason for my testimony majorly is because despite the fact that she was pregnant, she had to travel from here to KZN every week, like every fortnight. She would have to go through 12 hours of road trip, be pregnant to KZN. And then, despite all those challenges, we had that she was able to pass the remaining two weeks, pray for her. So, for the testimonies. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for your word, oh God, as the sun has shown in our life that we are not alone. We thank you, oh God, for success. We thank you, oh God, for preservation of life. We thank you. We give you all the glory. Father, Lord, we are not taking any of your goodness for granted, oh God. We appreciate you, our Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will cover all the testimonies with the blood of Jesus. We ask, God, that you bless all the testifiers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Shall we please rise to our feet? What a long dance done for me. I cannot tell it all. What a Lord, 
we worship you, we glorify your name, Father. Be thou this day, be thou exalted. Be magnified. We thank you, faithful Father. You are our God, you are our King, you are our Lord. Whenever we call upon you, you answer our prayers, O Lord. You are an answering prayer, God. You are Lord of all of us, you are the King of all things. We thank you, faithful Father. We honor your holy name, Father. We exalt your holy name, Lord. If you think of your goodness, if you think of your mercy, if you think of your greatness, if you think of your love, if you think of your favor, if you think of your grace, our mouth will be full of good. Lord, we honor you. We glorify your name, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are free. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Let's have our seat for a brief moment. Happy New Month to every one of us. This month you will be fruitful. Amen. I did hear you say a big amen to that. This month you will be fruitful. Amen. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, amen. this month you will be fruitful. Amen. Joel chapter 1 and verse 12. Joel chapter 1, verse 12. The Bible says, The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the plant tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Hallelujah. Briefly this morning, I want to speak to you on supernatural or divine fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. Supernatural, supernatural fruitfulness. Amen. Amen. Let's start by saying that the very first blessing that God gives unto man is to be fruitful. Amen. The very first blessing that God gave unto man is to be what? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it was very clear. The Bible says, and Jesus blessed, and God blessed them. And told them to be what? To be fruitful. That's what the scripture says. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be Fruit. So every human that God created has a covenant of fruitfulness with God. So, in other words, there is no excuse for us not to be what? Fruitful. Amen. So from the beginning, from the onset, we must note that once you are given back to, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the next phase is for you to be what? Fruitful. Fruitful. Now, by way of introduction, what does it mean to be fruitful? To be fruitful simply means to bear fruit. So if you look at it, what is fruit? Fruit is anything that can come out of you. So, God does not make you to be stagnant. Say to yourself, I will not be stagnant. I will not be stagnant. That's not the plan of God for you. God did not make you to be what? Stagnant. Amen. Amen. And we must, we must disperse some, some errors that only few people can be fruitful. No. Fruitfulness is not meant for a few people. Amen. Fruitfulness is not what? Meant for a what? For a few people. You also should be fruitful. You also must be what? Fruitful. In fact, every child of God is ordained to be fruitful. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible says, 
Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be female or female barren among you or among your cattle. Hallelujah. Amen. So the fruitfulness of God is not dependent on your sex, not dependent on your age, not dependent on anything. Even the Bible says, even your cattle. In other words, the works of your hands should be what? Fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. Say to yourself, I am fruitful. I can't hear you say, I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Everything about you needs to be fruitful. Everything about you needs to be fruitful. Fruitfulness is for those who have given their life to Christ. However, you and I, have responsibility to engage with this fruitfulness before it can come to pass. Amen. We have the responsibility to engage with this fruitfulness before it can come to pass. We need to effectively engage this fruitfulness. We need to know what can make things to be fruitful. If you are an agriculturist, you plant a crop. If you don't water that crop, what happens to it? Yeah. It dies off. And you know what the scripture made us to understand about crops that dies off? The Bible says every tree, every tree that doesn't produce should be what? Cut off. May you not be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus. So you need to be fruitful. So we need to understand what can make us to be fruitful. Morning, we want to look at two or three things that can make us to be fruitful. I have done it the secret of fruitfulness. The secret of fruitfulness. Number one, the first secret of fruitfulness is absolute dependence on God. Praise the Lord. Absolute what? Dependence on God. Because it is God in Himself who makes the seed. How together? It is God Himself who made what? The seed. It is God who brings the water or the rain. It is God who created the farmer that will plant the seed. And it is what God who makes the seed to grow so that it becomes fruit. Amen. So we must understand that God plays a prominent role in fruitfulness of his children. And this is why you need to settle your mind with him. Hallelujah. You need, you need not to play with God. There is nothing you can do without him. You cannot multiply without him. You cannot be fruitful without him. And that's the reason why in that Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, the Bible says God blessed them. After he had blessed them, he then said be fruitful. I'm telling you the truth. If God do not bless them, there's no way they could be fruitful. That's why the blessing of God, the Bible says, I did know what? Sorrow. You don't want to remain stagnant. You want to be fruitful. You need to absolutely depend on who? On God. That's the first secret. I can do nothing. I can do nothing without God. The other side of it is that I can do all things. To Christ. That strengthens me. In John chapter 15 and verse 5, John chapter 15, verse 5, God told us who, who is the holy. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the what? Branches. He that abideth in me, 
and are in him. The same bringeth forth fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. Absolute dependence on God is the key, is the secret. Is it no amount of human labor? Can help you if God is not involved. You can read from heaven to heart. You can have ideas. You can do everything with the seed. But if God is not involved, fruitfulness will be lacking. What is God expecting from you? God expecting, God is expecting that you partner with Him. When you partner with Him, you can never lose. God is saying, when you partner with him, what money cannot buy? Because I, I hope you understand that there are some things that money cannot buy. In fact, many things money cannot buy. But what is God saying? What money cannot buy? I am going to give it to you. Money cannot buy you peace of mind. People who are very rich, they are still very what? <laughs> they don't have peace of mind. They have a lot of money. What are they looking for? More money. Money cannot buy you protection. You can have security. We've seen president being more that. Even with their security. But when you put your absolute trust in God, you will see how God will make you fruitful. Number two secret is, and this is very important, avoid strife. You want to be fruitful. Avoid what? Do not have quarrel with anybody. You see, a family where envy and provocation always exist cannot be fruitful. A family where every now and then is about jealousy. I want to be greater than this. I want to be greater than you. There is no way that that kind of family will experience fruitfulness. Any organizations where you just want to break hearts cannot experience fruitfulness. Any church where there is no love, when all you want is to pull others down, there is no way fruitfulness can exist. In those places. That's why scripture made us to understand that we should always walk in the spirit. And do not fulfill the desires of the what? Of the flesh. A fruitful environment, like the crop that I'm telling you about, a crop that will be fruitful, everything that is needed for that crop to be fruitful must be available. The environment must be conducive. In winter, at least in this side of the country, of the world, you can't plant some crops and they will grow. Why? Because the temperature is low. Isn't it? Yes. It will not grow. See temperature as peace. See temperature as love. See temperature as everything that will make you that plant to be fruitful. And finally this morning, the third secret that I want to talk about is joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Joy is a secret of fruitfulness. And I want us to look at a woman of God called Anna. In 1 Samuel chapter 1. We all know the story of Anna. Anna was barren. She wasn't fruitful. For a while. And there are some things that I want us to understand in this life of this woman. Some of the things that could have delayed, because we've never looked at it, the fruitfulness of Anna. This woman has prayed. This woman go to prayer ground. Every now and then, 
She has gone to Shiloh many times, but there has not been positive results. But in my own view, the only thing that was lacking was joy. But as soon as she realized that joy is the key to unlock that fruitfulness, she took it upon himself. Now let's look at first Samuel chapter 1, verse 18. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible says, and she said, now, whatever that has happened in the before this verse. We must understand that she has been going to Shiloh, she has been praying all this while. But look at what happened in verse 18. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat. And her countenance was no more. Do you see? So even while she was praying, even while she was going to Shiloh, she was still what? Sad. Even while she was doing everything that she was doing, she was still what? For me, that was the thing that was allowing the devil to make her to remain barren. But after this point, after this verse 18, things began to change. You can see in verse 19 of that same first Samuel, the Bible says, and they rose up in the morning, heavy. And worship before the Lord, and return and came to their house to Rama and Ekana and Anna his wife, and the Lord remember her. Ha <laughs> ha! Did you understand what I'm trying to say now? She needed to do something special before the Lord remember us. I have told us before. Does God forget? Never. He doesn't have capacity to forget. But yet. As he chose those who will have mercy on and those who will have compassion He also chose those who is going to be remember. It doesn't mean that he's forgetting you. But maybe the thing that he, you need for him to say it is now your turn. Remember what we did some few weeks ago. The set time to favor. Maybe that thing that you need to do is to be joyous. Amen. Amen. Is to be what? Joyous. Take notes of something. Everything that lacks joy dries up. Everything that lacks what? Joy dries up. So, no matter how the sadness is, no matter how gloom the situation is, joy. Be joyful. In that joy chapter 1 verse 12 that we read, our scripture for today, the Bible says the vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, also the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of man. Where there is no joy, I'm telling you the truth. There is no fruit. There is no fruit. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. The Bible says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the only shall fail, and the few shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stores. Look at what verse 18 says. Yet! How many people will say with me that yet? Yet. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will joy. I will joy. In the God of my salvation. In the God of my salvation. Why? Because the Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like in feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. 
to the chief singer on my string instrument. In other words, even when it looks gloomed, even when it is not, it is not convenient, I will be joyful. Say to yourself, I will be joyful. Joy ventilates your spirit, man. Joy facilitates the influx of fresh ideas. When you continually dominate on yourself, on the sorrow that you are experiencing, you don't have fresh ideas. When you determine within your heart that I am going to be joyful, strength is released. Ideas is released. You can never be joyful and be confused. Yes. Did you hear what I said? You can never be joyful and be what? And be confused. Confused. So if you are in a state of dilemma where you don't know what to do, open that key. And you see how the fruit will start to be emanate. You can never be joyful and be grounded. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice. Always. And again I say, Rejoice. They might have bound me to understand that the joy of the Lord is my strength. My prayer for you this morning is that grace to remain joyful at all times will be released unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Joy is required us to lay hold on our fruitfulness. Even though John chapter 10, verse 10 says, the devil comes, John 10, 10, to steal, to kill, and to do what? But what I want to tell you this day is that as from today, nothing will be able to steal your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will be able to steal your joy in the mighty name of Jesus. And if there's anyone under my voice that is in a sorrow mood, that is sad. I congratulate you this morning. Because joy is in the air. It's a season of joy. Amen. And joy is released Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We must keep rejoicing. Because that is where our strength is. Let's conclude. You see, when we say you need to be fruitful, we are saying that every department of your life needs to be what? Fruitful. So you know where your life is, whether it is in your career, in your business, in the spirit realm, you need to be fruitful. God do not expect you to be stagnant. In any way, you need to be what? Fruitful. Fruitfulness, like I defined earlier, is when you bear fruit, when you bring out of you. So your career, your, your, your business, your, your education needs to be fruitful. There's nothing that is good in failure. Failure leads to sorrow. Failure leads to sadness. God does not expect his child to what? To fail. Say to yourself, I will not fail. I will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. And the key to that is joy. One of the most important keys to that is joy. So no matter what you are facing, no matter what you are going through, be joyful. And one of the ways in which you can be joyful is by worshiping him, by praising him, by giving him all the praise. That's what Anna and Ekana did, and God opened their womb. Let's rise up on our feet. We want to worship God this morning in our, in, our, in, in our own way. I used to tell you that don't look at somebody to worship your own God. Worship Him in the best way that you can. Worship Him in the best way that you want. That you can. Do not look at anybody to worship your God. I want you to begin to praise God this morning.
Give him all the honor, give him all the praise. Magnify his holy name, exalt his holy name this morning. Lord, we worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Give him all the praise, give him all the honor. Magnify him, magnify him, glorify his holy name. Exalt him this morning. Let your joy be exposed. Let your joy explode. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. We give you glory, Lord. As we honor you. Lord, you are water. Come on, lift up your voice and be joyful in your expression of what this is for
washing him this morning, give him all the praise, magnify his holy name, exhort him, express your joy to him, express your joy to him, express your joy to him, God. Thanks to Father. We give you all the praise. We exhort your holy name. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to give your blessing and your hand to God now. Hallelujah. Your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah.
Master to worship God. Give him all the praise. Shout to the Lord, holy hell, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to your name. Mountains bow down.
It's my season to fly high. I receive the fulfillment of broken promises. I receive the fulfillment of divine ever sent from above. I receive the fulfillment of speed in all I do. I receive the fulfillment of greatness. I receive the fulfillment of fruitfulness. I receive the fulfillment of all round the rest. I declare peace in my life, family and the land. I declare that at home. I declare that I will rejoice and celebrate. I declare that all the failures of the previous year are coming together to culminate into beautiful successes for me. I am God's child. I am his vessel. I am unstoppable. I am conquering the world for the Lord. It's our season of fulfillment of God's promises in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord go with you this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. May he make his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May you find favor in sight of men and in sight of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will have cause to be joyful this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will surprise you with a special testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shall we share the grace and fellowship together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Talk to your neighbor and say, Surely, surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Say it to yourself, right hand on your head. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, we are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.